Snestruck. Hi there, people are asking for Halloween stuff, so today and the next video will be all Halloween related content, starting with Halloween ROM hacks. Most of these are Super Nintendo, but some are made for other consoles or handhelds elsewhere. And if you're not familiar with how to get these to work, there's links in the description to help you out. To sum up, you're using a utility program to join two files together, the original game ROM and the IPS hack file. Once they're joined and the game works, you can play it on an emulator like SNES 9X or Z SNES, or you can put the ROM on a flash cartridge or potentially on your SNES Classic, assuming you've put the RetroArch emulator on it with the appropriate core. Alright, enough of that mumbo jumbo, let's start with Mario World hacks. The first one here is Call of Cthulhu, and as you can see, this is like if Mario somehow warped himself into a Lovecraftian world of hideous monsters and aliens. The pixel art here is really well done, and the level design isn't too cheap, but yeah, it's a Mario World hack, so of course it's really freaking hard. There is some inventive stuff here, like flipping between the background and the foreground layers, or this oddball uneven scrolling that you have to navigate. The visual style here really steals the show, though. It's one of the best looking ROM hacks I've seen, so definitely check this one out any way you can. Next is Exodus to Death. Man, that sounds like a title of a kick-ass Dolph Lundgren movie. Mario's soul must escape from hell in order to avoid oblivion. Sure, okay. Anyway, this one borrows visuals from all sorts of other games like Contra 3, Super Castlevania 4, Link to the Past, among others, and you're squashing eyeballs and green maggots, avoiding ghouls and whatever these things are. And again, this game is stupid hard. It's also not very long, as it was only intended to be a demo, so it's something like seven levels long. I should also mention that it only works on on ZSNES and no other SNES emulator. Still, it fits the Halloween motif very nicely, so I gotta mention it. Now, if your idea of a horror game is more abstract and messes with your head, then you gotta play this next one. It's called, um, The. Hey, that's as much information as the creator provided. This one is unnerving, in a good way. I'll scratch that, in a great way. Okay, this isn't much of a game, so to speak. It's more of a story where you're trying to piece together what the hell happened. I don't want to ruin too much. There is not much here I can show without ruining it. It's freaking great, though. If you play any ROM hack on this list, make sure it's this one. Whoa, what the hell was that? Anyway, moving on, of course I have to mention all the different Super Metroid hacks. These games are just plain creepy on their own any time of year, and I've already gone over most of these in past videos. There's Super Zero Mission and Hyper Metroid, both traditional hacks that see Samus exploring newly designed levels and worlds with a fresh new look. There's Super Metroid Rotation, which is quite literally a Super Metroid rotated 90 degrees, and there's Super Metroid Redesign, which completely reinvents everything you knew about Super Metroid, using an entirely new physics system that makes gravity stronger. Those are the main four I'd go with, just bear in mind that all four are really, really hard, way harder than the regular old Super Metroid, but hey, they're plenty creepy. There's a couple extra Metroid ROM hacks I want to mention though, starting with Super Hauntroid, where Samus is trapped inside her own nightmare desperate to escape. Again, this is a great looking hack featuring a new twist on the Metroid visual style while staying reasonably true to the traditional Metroid level design with lots of exploration but nothing too cheap. I should also mention that the author of this one is currently working on an upgrade titled Metroid Hex, and it looks even better, so be on the lookout for that one. Finally, for Metroid, there is also a hack for Metroid Zero Mission for Game Boy Advance titled Metroid Spooky Mission. This is basically just Halloween-themed Metroid, and it's a little on the cheesier side, but it works just fine. The game doesn't take itself very seriously, which is a nice change of pace, especially for Metroid. I also liked this one because it was a Metroid hack that was both polished and not absurdly ridiculously difficult. So yeah, it's massive space pumpkins, it's spooky power-ups, it's Samus saving Halloween. If you're more into comical tongue-in-cheek stuff, then Zombies Ate My Neighbors should be up your alley. There's three pretty good hacks out there, and all three are essentially just more Zombies Ate My Neighbors. In fact, that's what one of them is called. Oh no, more Zombies Ate My Neighbors. There's also Zombies Ate My Neighbors the sequel, which is my personal favorite of the three, and if you really want a challenge, there's brutal Zombies Ate My Neighbors. Bear in mind, these hacks were made by people who have played the original game to death, I'm talking hundreds of hours, so they've mastered the controls and are looking to create even more of a challenge, so all three of these hacks are ridiculously hard, especially brutal, but they are multiplayer, so you have the option of sharing your suffering with someone else. 
Super Castlevania 4 doesn't have very many ROM hacks, but there is one floating around out there called Other Castle, and uh, alright, it's just okay at best. I will say, if you've played Super Castlevania 4 to death, you'd get a kick out of this one, but it's not the most polished hack out there, but it's also one of the few Super Castlevania hacks out there, period, so it's worth checking out just for that. Here's hoping more of these come along, and with a little more polish at that. Of course, I have to mention the infamous Earthbound Halloween hack. This one was made by Toby Fox, the same guy who went on to make Undertale, if you've heard of that one. But Fox has since distanced himself from this hack, saying it hasn't aged well, citing the fact that it's a bit crude and, I'll say, adolescent. Still, from a storytelling perspective, and especially from a horror standpoint, this is a fascinating playthrough. You play as a bounty hunter who is tracking down a mysterious creature who mutilated a little girl's parents, and you encounter all sorts of crazy stuff along the way, all while trying to manage your own sanity. Like I said, this one's a bit crude, but if you want horror, then here you go. Last, I have to mention the infamous Sonic EXE series. This is an entire series of games that started out with the story of a teenager that discovers a strange mod of a PC port of the original Sonic game and sees all sorts of screwed up stuff. You play as Tails, Knuckles, and even Eggman, and Sonic is uh, not happy with any of them, I would say. The website SonicExe.net has compiled the best games in the series, and even has many of them available to be played in your browser, so there's minimal setup if you're just playing on PC, which is nice. Bear in mind some of these games aren't really games, so to speak, just creepy, weird-ass stuff happening. But if you want more of a game, then I would suggest Sonic Fear and Tails Doll.exe. That one keeps the same bizarre atmosphere, but is more of a game. Yeah, there's quite a bit of jump scare stuff, which some people may find cheap, but it's still crazy to see old 16-bit games we're all so familiar with being turned into whatever this is. Alright, I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.